In the last video, I talked about how to set up an image list on your form and also to add one of those images to a picture box. In this video, I wanna show you how to do a little bit more. What I want to do is to take all the cards from the card deck and to deal them horizontally across the form. And I showed you this in the earlier video and a small example of the application that I'm building. This will mean creating a number of picture boxes, 56 of them actually. Now, I don't want to take the time to create 56 different picture boxes on this form. I want to do it automatically. And that's one of the things I'm going to show you in this video. So first of all, let's get rid of this picture box. Also, let's delete this button. And then I'm going to go back to the code and right click view code. You'll remember this click event that was assigned to the button. That's still there, but now it's showing zero references. It's not being called by anything since the button's gone. So let's go ahead and delete that. And going back to the form. So I'm going to come over here to the toolbox, grab the button control and drag it over here onto the form. And let's call this button btn deal and let's change the text to deal cards i'll just expand that a little bit let's go over here to the events you can see the click event is right there that's the default event so i'm just going to double click and it's created a click event so the first thing I'm going to do is create a couple of variables. There are a couple of values that I want to work with during the course of this procedure. So I'm going to create a couple of integer variables. As you might be able to guess, those are going to be the starting coordinates for the first card that is dealt. So let's come down here, another line, and now I need a way to iterate through all the cards in that image list. Again, we have 56 cards and for every card, I need to be able to do a few things. First, I, I need to be able to get the card name. Then I need to be able to create a picture box with the name. Then I need to be able to specify that picture box's settings, including the file. And then I need to add it to the form. Now, what you're seeing here is an important step in writing code. You want to figure out what the code needs to do first, and you want to break it down into steps so that you have an outline to work with. You could just get in there and start hacking away and coding, but really it's best to come up with that basic algorithm, which is what this is. It's a series of steps that you want your program to follow and make that outline for yourself so you actually have a path to follow. So the first thing we're going to do is create a loop that's going to loop through all those cards in the image list. So I'm going to use a for each statement. Let's try that right now. For each string card in. Now, as you can see, IntelliSense is supplying a lot of values that you need within the code. It's supplying the names of controls, and methods that you can use and classes. So it does come in pretty handy. For each string C card in card deck, which is the name of our image list, images, that's the name of the collection of images in the image list, and keys. Because what I'm really going to do is iterate through the image names so that I can have access to them. So let's use an opening brace and it automatically closes. So we're going to get the card name from the keys collection within the image list. And the first thing I want to do is create a new picture box in code. Picture box, new card equals new picture box. Kind of like these variables up here, but this is actually an object reference to a new picture box in memory that I can add to the form. So on the next line, I want to add the image, the appropriate image to that picture box in memory. So I'm going to type new card, use my new object reference, image equals 
card deck images. And I'm going to use this reference up here because it's already supplying the name of the image. So I'm going to just insert C card and always end the line with that semicolon so it knows where the line ends. The cards themselves, as you saw in the last video, they have a certain set of dimensions. So I'm going to set the width and the height. And then I'm going to name the picture box because since we're going to have 56 of them, each one should have its own name on the form. So let's again use the image name that we already have. Now I have to set a location. Let's try that. New card, location. If you look at the IntelliSense, it's looking for what's called a point, which is actually a set of coordinates on the form. And these notes, these help notes are very helpful. You can get a lot of information from these. And what I would do if I was completely unfamiliar with this, I would see that, that it's looking for a point and I would start looking up that class in Google or whatever other documentation I had and figuring out how to work with points. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to select location equals new point because the point is actually another class in .NET. It's a class that maintains a set of coordinates. And when I hit the parentheses, you can see that it has four different ways of declaring a point. And let's take a look at those. Let me hit escape first to get out of this IntelliSense. You can see that you can declare a blank one. You can declare one with an integer as a parameter. You can use another incidence of the size class, or you can just supply the X and Y coordinates. And that's what we're going to do right here. So I'm going to use X pause and Y pause the two values that we declared up here. Now what I need to do is actually add the control to the form. And for that, I'm simply going to say this. It's a, it's a shorthand term for the current object that you're working with in .NET. In this case, it refers to the form itself. And I'm going to type controls because the form actually has a controls collection that it uses to maintain everything on the form, whether it's a button or a text box, or in this case, a picture box, I'm going to use the add method. And it's going to ask for a control. So I'm going to simply put in new card. So now it's added to the form. And right now, the next thing I'm going to do is update one of these values because the next card has to go a few pixels over. Otherwise, it'll put every card on top of each other and we'll only see one when it's done. So for this last line, I'm going to put in x pause plus equals 15. So I'm adding 15 pixels to the x position so it will move the next card over 15 pixels. Now this operator is actually a shortcut. I could say equals x pause plus 15, but C sharp and many other languages provides that shortcut where you can simply say plus equals 15. So let's take a look at our outline. We have the card name. We have a picture box with a name. We've specified some of the settings and we've added the picture box to the form. Now I could maintain these comments in the code. You should comment your code and make things clear, not only for other people, but for yourself. But for right now, for simplicity, I'm just going to remove these. So let's see if it runs. Let's see if this thing works. Go ahead and start the program. Okay, and it's opened up, and let's go ahead and deal the cards. And there we have our 56 card images. Now, this looks kind of strange. You notice the cards seem to be upside down. But what's really happening is that it's not placing them on top of each other as it deals them. So you're seeing only the right side of the card. So how do we fix this? Let's close this down. I'm going to add one line of code right after this one where I add it to the controls. I'm going to say new card, bring to front. 
And what that does, it will bring the card to the front of the collection that it's already added. And also make sure that you add the parentheses because even if you're not supplying arguments, it usually wants those parentheses afterward because it is a method. So let's go ahead and run this again and let's deal the cards. And this time, as you can see, it's placing them on top of each other. So we're seeing the left side of the card. Now, the next step is that when I double click on one of these cards, I want it to move down. I want to be able to manipulate these cards on the screen. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to write additional methods and other code that will actually move these cards around and respond to events. So stay tuned.